three and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm4975 and today I've got some YouTube top tips for you on how to grow your channel. So recently here on the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel, we hit a thousand subscribers, which is absolutely insane. It makes me really, really happy, and I'm so thankful to all of you guys who are still watching my videos, subscribing, liking, and commenting. It really does mean the world, and now that we've hit a thousand subscribers, I can actually monetize my videos. So. Look out for some adverts coming in front of my videos very soon, but that is a good thing because it means I can grow the channel even more. But today I've got some YouTube top tips for all of you. I want to give something back to the viewers and I want to help you guys grow your channels as well. So the first one we've got is good image and what I mean by this is having a good intro, a good YouTube logo, a good channel art slash banner, uh, and a good outro to your video. And it also means good editing in your videos. And you might not think about that straight away, but good image on your channel means making quality content, and part of making quality content is editing it correctly. Now the editing software I like to use is called Shotcut. I'll leave a link to the uh, download page in the description if you want to get it for yourself. I've been using this since I started the channel back in 2016 and it has served me very, very well. For small YouTubers like myself and for you guys watching, it is the perfect platform to use. It's not overly complicated. You can pick it up quite quickly and learn how to use it effectively but it has enough tools and um, options for you to make some really quality content. Now if you want to uh, push the boat out a little bit, spend a little bit of money, you can always get Adobe Premiere Pro. Luckily from my uh, university course I actually get a free subscription to Premiere Pro so I have been editing some of my more recent videos using that and that has a lot more features and you can go quite crazy with that and linked with that is also Adobe After Effects which you can add some special effects and video effects to your videos to make them have a little bit more flair and something a bit unique but that is more advanced I would say but then getting back to the other things, making sure you have a good YouTube logo, that is really really important because that is the first thing that your viewers are going to see they see your YouTube logo, they're going to click on it, and then they're going to visit your channel. And then straight after that, they're going to see your YouTube banner. So it's also important to have a good looking YouTube banner. And I've made both of these using a free online software called Pixlr. I'll leave a link to the description below. And uh, this is basically a free version of Photoshop. Now it can't do everything that Photoshop can do. But as a free version, again, I'm trying to save you guys a little bit of money. You might not have that much money to spend on your channel. This is a great starting option. Now, again, if you want to push the boat out, you can always go ahead and get something like Adobe Photoshop. Now, again, from my university course, I have Adobe Photoshop on a free license. So I've been using it a little bit more recently. And it is very good. It is a bit more advanced, though. Um, but if you know how to use those kind of things and you want to experiment, then it is very good. So my next tip is quite an important one. This is one that I use nearly all the time now. And it is to schedule your uploads. Now, there's sort of two parts to this. There's the actual scheduling your uploads using the YouTube schedule feature, which I'll get to in a minute. But the other part is actually having a release schedule for your videos. And this is something that you will have to work out for yourself. Depending on how often you can make content, that will depend on your uh, free time, how much money you have, what kind of content you want to make, etc. 
So at the moment I am releasing one video every week on a Saturday at 7pm. And a couple of weeks back I made a video where I explained this to all my viewers so they knew what was going to happen, when they can expect content. And I try my best to stick to that schedule so that returning viewers know exactly when to expect content. And that is perfect because you don't need all your subscribers to hit that bell notification because they already know when to expect content. And then the other half is actually scheduling your uploads. Now there is a feature on YouTube when you upload a video that you can schedule the upload. So you can upload five videos in a day and set them to go live at different points in the week or the month. So for example, what I might do is if I was uploading daily, is at a weekend, I might record all the videos that I want to upload that week. I will upload them on a Sunday night, and then I will set one to go live on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc. So it appears to your viewers that you're uploading daily, when actually you might just have a big spell of recording and editing, and then you upload it all in one day, and your viewers get content every day. My next tip is to write your video ideas down. Now this is quite a useful one. It's something that I don't think a lot of content creators to do, but I do it all the time and it has really, really helped me out. So the reason I do this is basically to stop me getting a block. And what that means is you don't want to get burnt out on YouTube. You want to keep creating content as much as possible. And it is very easy to find a lack of content or a lack of enthusiasm to make content. But if you have a load of ideas written down for videos that you want to make, then you always have something to fall back on. Now, if I think of a new video idea, I might go ahead and make it straight away and upload it. But if it's something that I'm not particularly interested in making at that point in time, I will write it down on a little list and then come back to it later. And this is brilliant, if you're struggling for ideas in the future, you can always refer back to this list, see what videos you've already made, see which videos you fancy making at that point in time, and go ahead and make a bunch of them, and you're out of that hole. And this also ties into the video release schedule. If you're trying to upload maybe daily, then this is gonna be a really useful one for you because it's gonna help you make content every single day. My next top tip is to be invested in your channel. And I'm not just talking about investing money into your channel, I'm talking about investing your time and effort. Now, as I mentioned, I've been growing my YouTube channel since 2016, and for the first probably four years, my channel has not gone anywhere. At the end of 2019, I was on 200 subscribers, and I was really proud of that goal, and I still am. And now here we are, halfway through 2021, and I'm on 1,000 subscribers. And that is because I have been invested in my channel, I've been posting content daily, I've been posting content weekly, I've been updating my um, followers on social media, I've been as active as I can with my YouTube channel. This might not apply to some of you smaller YouTubers, but for those of you who already have merch, like myself, every time I reach a subscriber goal, like the 1,000 subscribers we've hit now, I will do a merch giveaway, and I will give away one piece of merch to one of my subscribers for free. And this is really good because it brings in new subscribers. I will usually run my giveaways for a week to join the giveaway, what I say is that you have to subscribe to the channel and retweet the giveaway or like the giveaway or whatever you're gonna post it on. But make sure you have the subscribe part in there because that will bring any new viewers into the giveaway. It will make them have to subscribe if they want your merch. And this is a really good opportunity for me to let you all know that we actually have a thousand subscriber giveaway going on right now over on my Twitter page. All you've got to do is retweet the giveaway and subscribe if you aren't already. 
and you will be entered. I'm picking the winner next Monday. Good luck. But the other thing is to invest a little bit of money. Now I'm not talking about breaking the bank here, investing thousands of pounds into your YouTube channel. If you have that money and you want to spend it on your channel, then by all means feel free. But that is not gonna help you grow your channel necessarily. I'm talking about making small purchases that are necessary. So for example, the camera I'm using right now to record this video, I bought a new camera, it shoots in 4K, it came with a tripod, it has a microphone built in, and it's absolutely superb. I use it for every single one of my videos as a face camera, I use it for my cinematic videos, I use it for videos such as this, and it's an absolutely perfect purchase. It didn't cost me too much, it does everything I need to, and it helps me make more content. So things like that, maybe investing in an Adobe Photoshop license, or buying a new video game to make content on. Small purchases like that that are gonna help you create content are a good idea. But you don't want to spend thousands of pounds on a new headset or microphone that really aren't gonna help you out very much. My next tip, and I've already kind of touched on this one, but it is to communicate with your audience. Now, it's also important to know who your audience is. And one way you can do this is actually to look at your YouTube analysis. Now, on your YouTube analysis page, it will actually tell you what age groups, what country of origin people are watching from, and how long people actually watch your videos for. So for my YouTube channel, the sort of age bracket is from about 16 year olds to about 25 year olds. So I try to tailor my content to that age range. I try not to make content that's too old fashioned and I try not to make content that's too new either. I try to fit it within that bracket somewhere. Now the other thing you can look at is the country of origin. Now I have a lot of viewers from America and the UK and most of my videos are posted English, so that works absolutely fine. But if you have a lot of um, viewers from foreign countries that don't speak English, one thing that might be a good idea is to make some subtitles for that country. So say for example, you have a lot of viewers coming from France. What you could do is make your videos in English, but add some French subtitles, so all of your French viewers can understand what is actually happening. Now, another important part in this section is to reply, like, and review your comments on YouTube. Now, comments on YouTube are quite a big part of what makes this a media platform. People communicate with you, they like your videos, they dislike your videos, they might leave a comment and tell you things you can improve on or give you some video suggestions. And again, if they send you video suggestions, write them down and if you decide later that it's a good idea, you can come back to it. But replying to people's comments is a great way to build your audience. If you show your viewers that you are willing to communicate with them, discuss your channel or your videos, or maybe you made a mistake in your video, you could say, okay, thank you very much for pointing that out, I will make a video where I correct this. If you make the content they want, they're more likely to share it with their friends, say, hey, this guy's really good, he listens to what you want. If you have a suggestion, you know, drop him a suggestion in the comment section and he will actually make the content you want to watch. Part of making content is making content that you enjoy. So all of the content I make, including this video, is content I actually want to make. But you also have to listen to your viewers. If they want you to play a new game, then you actually have to try to play that game or make a video that they want you to make. Now, as well as writing ideas down, another thing that can be really helpful is to look at inspiration actually on YouTube itself. And YouTube has a really neat way of doing this. They actually have a trending page. Now I'm not sure how many of you guys actually use the trending page, but I use it quite a lot and it's very good uh, for looking at new content that's arrived on YouTube and the kind of videos that people like to watch. Now there are two types of videos on the trending page. There are videos that get a lot of views over a long period of time. So you might get say a million views over a month 
And then there are videos that get a million views over one week. And you have to pick which type of content you want to make. I try to mix it up between the two. I try to go for videos that are going to get me a lot of views quickly if I need them. And then I also have some videos that are going to get me a lot of views over a long period of time. And doing a little mix like that I find has worked out really, really well for me. And it can be a little bit difficult to judge what views, uh, what videos are going to get you a lot of views, what videos aren't. But if you listen to your subscribers for the kind of videos they want, then usually those videos will get you plenty of views. And my final tip is kind of a cliche one, but it is something that's quite important, and that is not to lose faith. Now, it can seem like a never-ending battle with gaining subscribers, getting more views, and trust me, I have been there all the way. As I mentioned previously, I started the, the channel in 2016, and from about 2016 to about 2018, I only had about 100 subscribers. I was very happy with that amount of subscribers. I was happy with the content I was making, but now I'm at 1,000 subscribers, and that has only really happened in the last two years. So I've gained a lot more subscribers by investing my time into the channel, keep making content, keep making quality content, which is important, and try new things as well. Don't be afraid to experiment when you're making a video. Maybe try a new font on your channel. Try a new editing technique. Add some lighting to your videos. Try a video position. Add a face camera. Play some different video games. All this kind of thing can help you get some more diversity in your channel, which is going to bring in a wider audience. And that is going to do it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed this top tips video. Let me know if any of these worked out for you. I'd really appreciate hearing your comments down below. And um, if you are new to the channel, I'd appreciate you dropping a like and subscribing. And don't forget we are doing a giveaway over on Twitter. But that's going to do it for this video. Thanks all so much for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And I'll see you in the next one.